Hey, hey, this is Mark Rodriguez. You're watching another epic episode of Video Game Masters. Johnny and I have previously covered a game called Capcom Fighting Evolution, also known as Capcom Fighting Jam, which is basically a crossover within Capcom itself. Now, around the same general time, SNK Playmore made their own fighting game that was also a crossover within its own properties. And this game has actually been requested by you guys a couple of times before. So yes, we're finally getting to it. Today we're going to talk about Neo Geo Battle Coliseum for the PlayStation 2. As Johnny would say, let's check it out. No escape! Fight! Neo Geo Battle Coliseum hit the arcades in 2005 and later on the American PlayStation 2 in 2007. It also hit Xbox Live in 2010. The main story involves the best fighters of the Neo Geo world entering this martial arts tournament to stop an evil organization called Wares from destroying them. It is a 2 on 2 fighting game in which you can tag in your partner at any time. The main arcade mode has 2 on 2 action, but similar to the Tekken Tag games, if one of your teammates loses, you both lose. However, in the tag team mode, you can actually continue the fight until both teammates have been defeated. You get a huge cast of characters to choose from, from games like King of Fighters, Samurai Showdown, The Last Blade, and even Metal Slug. You'll be seeing characters like Kyo Kusanagi, Iori Yagami, Terry Bogart, Mr. Big, Haomaru, and Genguru. The most noticeable characters are without a doubt Hanzo, Puma, Mudman, and Kizara from the World Hero series and the Aggressors of the Dark Combat, both made by ADK, a company that also made games for the Neo Geo. You'll also get two all-new characters sent specifically from a government agency to help take down wares. Yuki has mechanical moves and does poses like a superhero, and Ai fights with her Neo Geo pocket, although I'm not really sure what Tetris has to do with Neo Geo. You get all the fast-paced combos, counters, dashes, and desperation moves that you would expect from an SNK fighting game. You can also cancel your special moves into desperation moves for some crazy combos. The game gives you an energy bar to stock up on your super moves, but there's also a tag bar. When the tag bar is full, you can do a dual assault in which both characters jump in to double team the opponent. Some specific characters have special dual assaults based on their relation to each other. The character specific dual assault moves are kind of weird and kind of hard to do. You basically gotta do a specific special move, then you got 10 seconds to do another special move to actually do it between the characters. The main arcade mode gives you a time limit to defeat as many opponents as possible. You face 3 different teams of fighters and then you earn yourself a bonus before fighting another team of different fighters. You can choose from giving yourself more health, or to increase your power bar, or to add more seconds to your time limit. Once your time runs out, no matter what match you're in or what's going on, everything just suddenly stops and you prepare to fight the boss. Yeah, the bosses. Let's get into those bosses at Neo Geo Battle Coliseum, shall we? The boss you face depends on how many opponents you defeated before time runs out, or if you used extra bonuses or not, or how much health you have left, or even how many times you were able to connect with the dual assault moves. If you fail to meet any of the requirements, your default boss is Mizuchi. Mizuchi is the clone of Orochi, the boss of King of Fires 97, and he was created by Wares for whatever reason. Unlike Orochi itself, who would waste a lot of time just standing around doing nothing, Mizuchi is pretty damn merciless. If you can score 6 wins, not use any dual assaults, and use only one bonus, you get to fight King Leo, the boss of the Savage Reign series. He is one of the most random choices because there aren't any other Savage Reign or Kazuna encounter characters in the game to face them. Even when the bosses are unlockable, you get to play as King Lion, who is an imposter and not as powerful as the real King Leo. If you're able to get 6 or more wins, do 4 or more dual assaults, and use only 2 of the bonuses without using any continues, you can fight Neo Dio. He's the final boss of World Heroes 2 and World Heroes Perfect. Though he is very annoying, I actually think he was a lot harder to beat in the original World Heroes 2. Now, for the real final boss, you have to get 8 or more wins, use 6 or more dual assaults, not use a single bonus, and half your fighters have their health above 50% before time runs out. Damn it, not Mizuchi again. Your hands up. You win. Oh come on, I thought you had him this time. Oh damn it, not Mizuchi again. Oh guys, 
I guess I really gotta do it this time. I mean, I've been a video game master for over 70 episodes for all these years. I played all these SNK Neo Geo games with the SNK boss syndrome. It is time to pull all my skills together, all my past knowledge, all my combo ability. It is time to resort to easy mode. So, no escape. Fight! If you can do all that, you get to fight the real boss. Goodman, and as you can see, he's incredibly powerful and incredibly cheap. Keep in mind, this is still easy mode I'm playing here, and just look at this crap. I can't even do shit. Goodman's overall design is very similar to Ignis from King of Fires 11, who was cheap in his own right. The weird thing about Goodman, though, is just how mysterious he is. He seems to just name himself on the spot, so who knows what his real name is, or if he even had a name. And then when you defeat him, he says you're too much for him, in his current form, that is. Since you're gonna probably never see a sequel to this game, I guess you're never gonna see what Goodman's true form was. <laughs> The tag team mode plays more like a regular arcade mode without worrying about the time limits and all that, though I'm not 100% sure what the requirements are to face the different bosses in that mode. You also get a survival mode to let you unlock the bosses, a practice mode, and of course a good old fashioned 2 player versus mode. And now here are my thoughts on Neo Geo Battle Coliseum. Neo Geo Battle Coliseum is a fun game, and the best thing about it is the overall roster. You get such an interesting selection of characters, and it's cool to see them adapt to the King of Fighters gameplay style. The part that really got me hyped up though, the part that really made me want to buy this game, was finding out that we were getting the World Heroes characters. You also get to see an older Ryo and Robert, as well as Lee from Art of Fighting, and a more realistic version of the Metal Slug character Marco. You even get a character from King of the Monsters, how cool is that? I mean, this game is really what Capcom Fighting Evolution should have been. Now, yes, people were getting sick of the King of Fire's graphics by then, and the characters like Kim Kaplan and Maestro Nui were looking pretty stale, but you do have so many non-KOF characters to work with and to learn how to use that you barely notice them. The stages are cool and full of cameo characters, and as usual, some of these characters are people you wish were an actual game, but oh well. The music's alright, just kinda of forgettable. The only themes that really stay with me are the awesome title theme and the theme when fighting Mizuchi, which is also kind of annoying, like Mizuchi. I mean, the song's alright, just that since I associate with Mizuchi, it's annoying to me by default. The storyline breaks the fourth wall, as Wares is based on video game piracy. SNK blames part of what caused it to go bankrupt back then to be people pirating your video game. So you're basically fighting video game piracy on the side of Neo Geo, which also explains ADK characters since their games are also on the console. In fact, I guess you could kind of say that Wares was creating Mizuchi by pirating Orochi. The arcade mode is also pretty weird with the time limit and the different bosses. It feels like a weird combination of survival mode and time attack mode, but I guess the tag team mode fixes that if you want a more traditional arcade mode. Unfortunately, the only endings you're going to get are just pictures of the bosses getting defeated, and if you actually defeat Goodman, some extra text for the guy you selected. I would love to see much better endings with the characters interacting with each other than some of the other crossover games out there, because I mean, that's basically the best part of a crossover game, to see these characters interact, to see Terry Bogart talk with the Mel Select characters or something. I also wish it added more special dual assault moves for the characters. You only get like 4 or 5, like Kioni Yori or Terry Bogart and Rock Howard, but why not more? Why not have something for like Mr. Big and Geese Howard or Haomaru and Genguru, or even think outside the box and have something like Maishu and Nui and Kuma. I mean yeah, they're from different games but they're both ninjas with fire raid attacks so that would have been kind of cool. Overall though, the game is still a lot of fun because you get so many characters to choose from from all these different games and all these different playstyles. It's just very awesome and worth checking out if you're a fan of SNK and classic King of Fighter games. And that wraps up another episode of Video Game Masters. As always, this is Mark Rodriguez. Thanks for watching and see you next time. So, what is this voice bender? Well, a voice bender has the ability to throw their voice into internet shows. That way they can be in a show without showing their face. Mm. Oh, like Victim 16 and Gurak Sadi? Yeah. Oh, is that hard to do? Yes. Only the truly skilled in the art of the interwebs can master it. There are very few in the world that can do it. Let me show you.
And that's why I think that Time Killers and World Heroes would be a perfect crossover. You've got the whole time travel thing. Definitely different styles. They'd have to work on it and stuff. Snooping but... as usual. Hello? Oh, God. We don't have to pay that guy to be our cameo, do we? Whoa, that's pretty cool. Can anybody learn how to do that? No. It only works for the severely camera shy. Aww. Aww. So, ain't just a voice vendor, but... How does that work? I mean, we invite Victim 16 and Gurix Dive to our show all the time, but how did Angel even find out about our show? I don't know, but I do know that the range we throw our voices is limited. She must be somewhere in the city. You mean Angel's been in the city the whole time? I mean, that's creepy. She's been stalking us? How do we find her? Well, next time she makes an appearance, you need to find a way to track down the signal her voice leaves behind. So, how do we do that? I don't know. You guys have an internet show about video games and stuff. Don't you have some weird sci-fi thing or whatever? No. The only guy we know with all that sci-fi and Doctor Who stuff is Land Moore. No. Then call him up. No, no, no. No, oh, I have more on speed dial. No, we're not calling more for help. Why not? Well, because Mark and Moore are like enemies or something like that. Mark! Mark! I'm with this guy. Mark! 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 Get the hell out of my house! Well, fuck you too, Mark! This game is all. Mark! Mark! Mark's, Mark's not, not here! here. He's my sworn enemy. He's out to destroy me. But I destroy him first! No, come on, man. All he does is take subscribers. That's even worse! Well. If you want to defeat Angel, you're going to have to put aside your differences and work with him. Well, why don't wanna? Why do you and Moore hate each other anyway? Well, believe it or not, we were actually the best friends once.